Is it truly possible for you to fatten your livestock, whether it be cattle, goats, sheep, pigs, without actually using any sort of enhancer or drugs in fattening those animals? Because don't forget, as you're fattening them, their health and our health, which is the consumers, are very important. In this video, I want to share our experience with you on how we are fattening our cows and goats and how other farmers in Ghana here are also doing that without using any fake medication nor any enhancer to achieve the results that we actually want. So, if you're one of those people who is actually thinking about going into the fattening business or thinking about, can I actually get my livestock to the level where I can make money off? Then stay tuned because this video is gonna give you the education that you need in order to start your fattening program. Welcome back guys, and thank you so much for sticking around because today we're gonna to be talking about fattening your livestock. I'm, 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 I'm compelled to actually say cattle because that's where most people feel like they need to fatten their, their cows. But we're talking about livestock in general and what are the things, the best practices that we have done that has made us actually be able to buy a cow for 1,500 CDs and sold it in less than a year for about 5,000 Ghana cities, right? And it's just because of the structure or the difference in when we bought it and what we did and how we were able to sell it, right? And that's what we're talking about today. But before I go on, I want to let you guys know that the rainy season has started. If you want to get your brachyria grass or alfalfa, you can now buy it online by going to www farminginafrica.com slash brachyria and you will be able to buy it anywhere that you are and we can deliver it to you but if you want to see our faces then pass by our agro shop at Achimota opposite the Achimota DVLA and you can see us and all the staff and be able to buy it directly from us as well but today we are talking about fattening and what is the number one thing on my list when it comes to setting up a fattening um, livestock business in most developing country they have actually established feedlots whether it's private or government where you can take your livestock and they have a food program or a feeding program that they put your cow your goats on and and feed that goat or cow over a period of time to achieve a certain um you know size or weight that you're looking for here in ghana we don't have that i'm still looking for that person who is going to say i'm going to plant like 2,000 hectares, 1,000 hectares of brachyria grass and alfalfa and be able to bail and sell to other farmers or even be able to allow feedlot process to happen there. So if you're the one, contact me because I think somebody needs to do this because people cannot plant. Not everybody can plant their own grass or feed. Since we don't have such feedlots, we have to do everything ourselves. And therefore, the most important thing to do is how you set up your farm. First of all, you cannot fatten your cattle if they are doing random grazing because every food that they consume, wherever they are going to eat, they will have to walk that back. And when they walk that back, they lose a lot of energy. Just like people, when we exercise a lot, we eat a lot. So when a cow has to walk three hours to a feeding ground, eat, and then walk again three hours, by the time he gets home, he's wasted a lot of energy and what does that cost us? That means that cost of food. So how you set up your farm is gonna be very important if you can actually have the success in the weight that you're looking at. I have visited so many farms in the US, in Mexico, and none of the feedlots did I see that cows were actually walking. They were all being fed, you know, in a confined place. So they don't really exercise a lot of course they have space to move around but they are not walking kilometers or miles away to waste energy so whatever they feed stays in the body and is then being processed number two as still part of the structure is comfort right so you can also have your livestock under the sun 24 7 and then expect them to grow bigger if they are not comfortable, if they are like flies all the time, if they have ticks around them, if um, they, they are under the sun all the time, they are irritated and that irritation brings stress. And what, what happens when people are stressed? You lose weight. 
right? So just like animals, if they are not under conditions that are favorable or comfortable to them, then they might also lose weight and therefore all your effort in fattening them is not gonna help. If you have what I have, which is the Gudalis, they don't like mud, they don't like dirty. So if you keep them in a place where it's muddy, they are actually not gonna be comfortable. Irritation and therefore do not even focus on feeding. I know most of you that are doing fattening programs are doing it at a very small confined place. Make sure you're cleaning. Cleaning, 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 cleaning so that they feel comfortable, they can rest, they can lie down when they are full because most livestock cannot even lie down in their own pen because it's full of nasty stuff that they don't want to sleep in. When that happens, you lose the effort in what you're trying to do, right? And if you're also gonna feed them here, then you need to put them on a feeding program, right? So depending on what time they are weaned from their parents, you need to make sure that you also have the right nutrients to still keep them going, iron, copper, right all these things minerals are what they were getting from the breast milk the moment you take them off breastfeeding you need to start introducing these nutrients to them and make sure that your feeding is also consistent of course diseases can also cause issues depending on how you're set up if you're cleaning and doing your due diligence then you're also able to prevent them from certain diseases i cannot talk about food without water as you all know, our body is made of 70% of water. That means that anybody who is slim like me, that's mean that they don't drink enough water. And therefore, if you want your animals to get fat, you need to give them clean water consistently all the time, right? I've been to so many farms where the water is like a mud water. Like if they give it to you, you will not drink it. So why do you want a healthy animal that you're trying to fatten? to be drinking that water. So clean water, consistent water at the farm at all times. There shouldn't be a time where they don't have water in their pen or in their grazing yard. So you wanna make sure that you're giving them water. And all comes by how you set up your pen and the infrastructures that you put in place. I think the point number two, which I touch on point number one around feeding, is also the formula of feed that you put together. I touch on a little bit on the fact that winning stage you need to cover a lot of the minerals because they are still very young and need those minerals but as they move from winning stage you know to eight nine months you really want to make sure that you know the protein content right depending on even what um, weight do you want you know you need to also be able to separate them to say who is picking up progressively who is lacking behind and whoever is lacking behind what kind of feed do I give to them? So here what we do is we weigh our livestock every two weeks. And every two weeks based on their weight, we regroup them again. And based on that, we come up with a feed formula for them. Again, if you want our feed formula, we have it on our website. Go to www.farminginafrica.com slash resources. You will be able to download um, all the free resources that we've put together to help you guys, including a feed formula for you actually, right? So you can follow that, corn, wheat brown, brachyria grass, alfalfa, how to mix them and create a formula for each livestock, depending on what level or weight that you want them to get to. So feeding formula, clean water, key to the success of fattening your animals. And as you guys can see, I have still not touched on any medication any enhancement that we are still building and as you can see most of our livestock are very big come with me let me show you a goat that is actually just three months right so you look at this goat here is three months all the baby goats that you're gonna see in this farm are less than three months actually right and we haven't given them any enhancement or any medication to actually help them you know, grow fat. It's all about feeding, water, and cleanliness, right? Most of these guys are also pregnant and also depending on the food that we give them and the weight level that we want to keep to them. Another most important thing, which is my final point, is healthcare. As you can see from our farm, it's very clean. None of our animals are dirty. We've never had any health issues based on cleanliness. Look at this animal right here. This is a very clean, neat livestock. If anybody wants to sell me that animal, I will buy it in a heartbeat. The skin of it alone tells you how this animal is kept, right? 
you see, you don't see any bones, you don't see anything. All what you see is a healthy looking animal. Both the Kalahari, Savannah, and the boa goats, they are all looking very, very clean, right? So this animal is definitely, right, not gonna get sick for no other reason, right? Because they are very clean, they are properly maintained, they are feeding, they are water, everything we try our best to do it on point. As you can see, even in their playing ground, we still have built a shelter where when the sun is very hot, they can actually go and, you know, chill so that they are not exposed to the heat 24 seven. So this is what I mean by really taking care of your livestock, right? So as you can see, even when it's very hot, they are able to come here and chill. And even on this structure, we have left spaces in between so that it's still not dirty and their poops are also nicely covered.